tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Last week, as we started the new year, it was Making a Difference first episode for the year, I invited different life coaches. So I had Coach Tony Espiritu. And then, of course, I had the very famous, compelling goal setter, Coach Cherry Pua Africa, and with her friend and a very, very special guest, Miss Jinbi Go. She is the president of the BPI Family Savings Bank. So they gave their insights on how to set your goals and keep uh, stay on track with your New Year's resolution. So if you want to watch that episode, you can still watch it on Making a Difference Facebook page or you can watch it on V81 Radio's YouTube channel. So you can watch that episode together with my previous episodes since Season 1. It's all there in our Facebook and YouTube channel. So for this episode, I invited a, an environmental youth organization and with me today are their two representatives, two very young representatives and their names are Danielle Savellano and Mati Bal Balagat. So I'd like to call them on screen. Hi Danielle and Mati. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Are you okay? I'm good to be here on the 81 radio. So, Danielle, um, tell us something about yourself. Are you still studying? Um, where are you based? I'm Dan or Dan, and I'm 18 years old. I'm currently a senior at the Philippine Science High School in Diliman. And wow. yeah, I'm the partnerships chair of Favor. So um, then we have Matty. So hi, Matty. Hello. So I'm Matty. Matty Balagat. And I'm 21. I'm currently um second year student at Okayama University. So I'm based in Japan. And I'm oh. taking environmental studies. Um, let's oh. dive into the youth organization. So you both are part of Wayfarers. Maybe um, one of you could tell us um, a little background on Wayfarers. How did it start? Okay, so Wayfarers is an environmental youth organization based in the Philippines. And it was founded in 2018 by... Uh, our executive director, Cherise Redanion. And oh. yes, I our think. current aim is actually uh, helping solve environmental problems by spreading awareness of environmental issues and empowering the youth to take action on them. Mm -hmm. okay. So, oh, sorry, when did the organization start? So, the organization started in 2018. So, Mm -hmm. It started with coastal cleanups and it entered the digital in 2020 along with the ECQ. So, mm, okay. a lot of our members, our current members, only joined in 2020. Talk more oh. on um, your vision slash mission um, for the youth organization. So, um, I know you mentioned that you. Uh, the organization really um, spreads awareness no, on the environment. So maybe we can talk more about that. Yes. Yeah, so um, because there are a lot of you know issues that parang are demanding our attention, we want um, the youth to know what they can do about it, and we want na in their life and in their um, local communities, they're making decisions that are for you know, the welfare of the environment and the people because we believe that the youth are can be in the forefront of making a lot of waves of positive change. Mm. Okay, so is that why is that where you got the name Wayfarers? How did that how did that how did that come about? Actually I'm not sure how it came about, but it's more like we guess it, we started with coastal cleanups, but 
actually from coastal cleanups we learned na since parang very short term yung mga coastal cleanups we decided na we will focus on education and advocacy instead so mm-hmm. from from waves yung coastal cleanups we're focusing on you know other environmental issues then such as um ma climate change and you know? okay 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 uh, that when did you uh, start with wayfarers because i know daniel is kind of recent right daniel uh, so for me i joined in 2019 Actually, mm-hmm. the founder is my close friend from high school. She's my batchmate, and I was looking for an environmental organization because mm-hmm. um, my environmental problems they're very close to my heart. Because there are so many personal experiences that I realized how important it is to take care of the environment, and one of those experiences is parang yung mga floods. Especially the Ondoy. So, in my whole high school life, I was looking for an organization where, you know, I can try to work my skills and, you know, just contribute. So, yeah, I joined. Okay, so you and Daniel, you met in the organization already, or were you friends also before? Essentially, yes. Like we were in the same school, pero she was two years above me. At for that, so we first, yung like kausap kami. Okay, and, and how that, did you? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ah, uh, wait. How did I join we first? Yeah. In Berlin. Okay. So last year. I was looking up orgs because we were all in the pandemic, we didn't have to do And to parang alleviate the feeling that we're hopeless in a way, like we didn't have to do I was looking up orgs and since Wayfarers was founded by a group of students in my high school, I reached out to Ate Cha, I mean Cha, and yeah. asked her if she was interested if A group of my friends and I held a webinar for the org. Since at the time they were on hiatus, mm-hmm. and then from there, taloy taloy na like Cherry said, okay, let's do it. Yeah, from there taloy taloy na we held the webinar. Then we uh, recruited more members, and mm-hmm. the rest is there. <laughs> okay, nice. It it oh, really said. You, how did Wayfair start with the coastal cleanups? So from what I know, it was a social science project no founder namin. And they they worked with LPP Chea. I think it's in Las Piñas and along Manila Bay. So it's always a problem now. They get a lot of plastic pollution on those coasts. So, um, parang natural solution, sure, was to start an activity, and it turned out na um, maraming interested to join. So we actually um, they made it open, and a lot of people came, and it garnered a lot of attention really because they saw people saw na this was being led by youth, and they saw that coastal cleanups could become a very um, Parang it's a start. What do you start? usually do during a coastal cleanup? We just pick up trash, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And one of the things we did sa mga last sa siguro sa last cleanup ng 2018 was after mm-hmm. picking up trash for siguro two hours. We looked at what brands were on the plastic and tried to count kung um, ano yung mga companies na ginagawa ng plastic na to and how many kinds of plastic or trash there are. So it, it actually 
it's more than just clean up. It's also learning kung ano yung mga sources of this plastic pollution. Right, right. From okay. you ladies. Maybe, Danielle, you could share like a story on um, what you did during the COVID cleanup. Uh, so, my experience with coastal cleanups involved joining ICCs or International Coastal Cleanups and an internship in Bacolod. And the one thing that stuck with me is how surprising the items that you find is. Like, stuff that you could find involve diapers, um, feminine products, and even a mattress. We found a mattress once. And a mattress? Also, like, like carcasses, like animal animal um yeah animal carcasses and there are a lot of trash that we can't really get like they're not microplastic level but they're small enough that you can't get them and that's what sticks in like the soil and what animals eventually like they ingest and you know the experience go when i was doing coastal cleanups and kahit kung go it like no internship namin we did it almost every day but kahit kung it was in a, a geo res- reserve and not really had plastic users especially in the philippines since we're an archipelago maraming trash from other countries kahit kung hindi galing sa atin mismo Wow. Okay. So during our event, we invited two speakers to talk about their experiences as experts in environmental science. And one was uh, Masungi GRI, Master Coordinator, and the mm-hmm. was a if I recall correctly. So when we planned it, we with the pandemic. So we didn't want people to lose attention to environmental topics. And each the webinar we combined topics na yon with the pandemic because there's a relationship between the two. Areas. Uh, you mentioned yeah that their the topics you related the pandemic and the um environment. So um maybe you could make some examples. How are they um related to one another? Okay, so for the environment and the pandemic, it's been hypothesized for a while now that coron- the coronavirus is a zoological disease or zoonotic disease. So it came from animals in a way. And mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's been proven, but if it if it hasn't, there have been zoonotic diseases naman in the past now we can refer to instead. So when we don't take care of the environment talaga, it, it directly impacts us and even our health issues. So, for example, kung are floods, we don't take, we throw trash out and plastic um, plastic develops and collects in our sewage system. So, floods occur and dahil doon, mas madaling nag to transfer yung mga diseases from animals like rats, ganon. Kasi they have to go out and not drown. <laughs> Yeah. And ayun, kano nag spread yung mga vectors, mga disease, and yeah. that's one thing that we connected for oh. wayfarers. Actually, after the webinar, the first thing we did was recruiting more members, and we had another webinar. But since we discussed na webinar, uh, we had. A donation drive in conjunction with that webinar and it helped build publicity for that and in the end we raised 
if I remember correctly, 200,000 pesos for our fisher folk community in Makoor, Nabotas, and I'm not sure of the last community off the top of my head, I'm sorry, but near the Manila Bay area. Nice, go I think I think Mati can discuss that more, like our donation drives. Yeah, so we actually had two after yung webinar since in during the webinar, the second one was actually about conservation and we invited a uh, chairperson of a fisher folk organization to give us like a first person like account of what it's like to actually work with the environment and depend on it. So during the webinar, he told us about any amount of problems that fisher folk are facing. So we decided that we would want to help out since their partner community in Bacoor is actually facing a lot of threats. So along with climate change, which is parang threatening yung mga food sources ng mga fishes, they're also facing threats like reclamation projects. And itong mga reclamation projects, they're, they highlight how much humans can uh, really have a destructive effect sa mga um, sa environment and this can actually affect us back since I mean if you're going to dump land sa so sea which is a habitat for fishes san mo san pupunta yung like fish supply natin mm-hmm. so that's how we tried to help out and during the November typhoons, when, uh, the, our community was also affected by a fire. So they had to deal with the effects of both the typhoon and the fire. So we thought that it would be best uh, since we have already a community who's um, listening to these kinds of issues, we wanted to pull in their help and gather funds and raise attention on their issues. Yeah. Do you have any future plans for wayfarers or is or is there like a main goal that you're trying to reach uh, for wayfarers yeah definitely so sorry wayfarers is uh, we have a very active social media presence and we're trying to foster a kind of facebook group which we call community so Arang community siya for young environmental advocates na they're able to share mga news or mga environmental opportunities that other advocates might be interested in. And we actually get some people to write about an environmental issue and we call it topic of the week or topic of the month. So it's really a learning space and we're also planning to hold mga casual sessions we call tambahayan na mm-hmm. every two months shut out and we like we did one or two last year and parang my topic and then we try to learn and discuss it casually play games about it watch a video together so I know, something very casual and open because you know we want to get a lot of advocates and working together so for the um, Facebook community group, com- community, right? Um, is that open to anyone? Ah, yes, it's open. So you can actually find it. And naka link siya to our Facebook page. Mm-hmm. So our okay. volunteers now because maybe there are viewers out there who might be interested to help you guys out. Uh, for the members, membership and volunteering, we plan on opening our member applications again soon. And for volunteers, we actually had a volunteer program quite recently, and it was concluded last January 5. And it initially started to help high school students who had community service requirements. So as you said, Ganina, diba, marami sumasali because of their schoolwork. And I... <laughs> Uh, what does that vol? Me parang isang apple. Mm-hmm. Sale. Hmm. What's that volunteer program? Uh, me isang apple. Just napansin namin. Oh, they have a script. <laughs> so we made the volunteer program 
so they can have a glimpse of what working with pavers is like so this includes different types of tasks like creative work social media handling mm-hmm. news and feature article writing and ayun, after they finish the program pwede naman silang umalis like it's a volunteer based thing <laughs> and they can be pero at least meron siguro silang na-earn na enhanced skills and if they want to stay mas mapapadali yung application period nila since kilala oh. na namin sila and yung work ethic nila thank it's so important to take care of the environment especially today like this year today what what what, what do you guys think okay touched on this a bit earlier like relating the environment with the pandemic but i think the main reason that one could think of wanting to fight for the environment is because we live in earth <laughs> we live on earth and it's our home so when we harm the environment as said earlier we harm ourselves as well and it's vital for us humans to like depend on the environment and take care of it because it gives us food, shelter, it gives us medicine sometimes and other benefits such as pets. Like everyone loves pets. So if you have a pet then you should probably take care of the environment. Right? And in a time such as a pandemic, it's really important to like check how Check what you're doing. So, exam- an example for that is online shopping, and it might seem mm. like a small thing, but it can really pile up to, like, have a lot of plastic waste. And it's this climate crisis that we have now. It's already been declared by the government, and it's really something that's urgent and that we should look into and focus on. Right, right. Agree. Very. I agree with all points from Danielle. How about you, Matty? What are your thoughts on this? For me, it also stands out that you know we should take care of the environment because we only have one Earth, and right now we're seeing, especially with the really powerful typhoons in November, it's a very urgent task. That we ha- there's a climate crisis on our hands, and we have to. Do what we can to save it, they save the environment. And we're actually in a time na you know these typhoons be lang sila natural hazards. Pero some of the things that we're doing, like our overconsumption or you know the e- mga carbon emissions, they're kind of accelerating. Kung ano yung damage na ginagawa niya to the environment, and you know we're Parang, especially sa youth, kaya, kaya super uh, important topic siya is dahil, ano, you know, we're going to be inheriting this kind of environment and it's we're going to live in it for how many decades and you know, there's a lot of uh, actually very alarming news na, you know, the environment, ay, mga endangered species, mawawala by, because of rising temperatures, very you know, we all have, uh, kind of it's a hope that a lot of us have capacity to do what we can in our own way and i think it's important to remember that you know, we have our personal circles but even with our personal circles marami tayong magagawa with regards to you know these big problems that are facing us right now right right so Steps, follow us um can we take to help further improve the environment so we can have um personal wake up what we can do in our maybe we could change in our daily routine and then maybe um as a community as well how can we help and really better our make, make our environment better what do you guys think So for me, the first step is really to learn more about our environment. And it seems at first na parang 
we're doing a lot of things wrong. We're using too much plastic. We're using too much electricity. But we need to recognize, Ren, that you know a lot of these problems are systemic. So, like example, sa plastic, you know, wala naman tayong choice minsan, and you know we have to recognize na sometimes bigger producers or even um, government agencies might have a bigger role to play. So you know it's important to learn more about issues, and you see how kind of have a more open view of environmentalism. You know it it intersects a lot with issues such as social justice, poverty, and So everyone has kind of a um, entry point into environmentalism, but we might not just notice it yet. So learning is really the first step. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, adding yeah, on next. to that, <laughs> adding on to that, uh, although individual change is important, I think that it's important now to make systemic change. So we need to pressure those who are higher up the food chain, I guess. So, for example, like having campaigns. So, in Wayfarers, mm-hmm. we've had social media campaigns and email campaigns. In partnership with some of our partner organizations like Biakab and other orgs, mm. and that's an important part of environmentalism. Like, although one person can make one change, it's better if we urge university. Or are you just applying to um, those have univ- university? Mm-hmm. But I've had like I've had universities like programs that i've been interested in and i've mm-hmm. applied for them and was actually accepted to some of them but wow the- congrats yeah yeah like what sorry if you could cite lang uh oh. what you got accepted. i think the yeah. one that i am most accepted i most accepted for most excited <laughs> is a biomedical engineering program in the United States and yeah. go for it go for it I'm so excited for you I think okay. as an environmentalist you can generally generally like integrate it with envy like any anything can be integrated with the environment it's just yeah, yeah, an yeah. application yeah but it's nice that your it's your passion your passion is there you really care for the environment so it's gonna help you in your career i wish you um i wish you well on your career path that's really exciting and i hope everything turns out um well for you danielle how about matty on oh, matty naman you're in you're in university now so um are you enjoying so far what, what do you see yourself doing after university yeah, ako, I'm enjoying the man. I actually don't, but I don't really like this question when I'm asked it. Because it's <laughs> sobrang napapaisip ko, ano, ano pala yung gagawin ka sa buhay? I don't know. So, um, compared naman to Danielle, uh, I think I want to make environmental work my career. So, inisip ko pa ko after college, um, I'll join a non or be more active in nonprofit work or or I'll take further studies pa. Because mm-hmm. right now I'm really interested in environmental anthropology. So parang subfield siya ng anthropology. Nice. And ayun, right now I'm just really exploring a lot of yeah. options. Because mm-hmm. you know, I'm still young and you know. In <laughs> Wayfarers, we are currently implementing our paminal small group discussions and as the name suggests there's small group discussions between high school students and environmental experts so these involve those working in the field of agriculture um, marine biology and anything and beef basically so what we need for this project is more participants so if you know someone who is for example a teacher principal or and you can send us an email at gmail.com mm-hmm. and 
we talk about it. <laughs> or if you're a student and you want to bring the project to your school, then you could also message us on our Facebook page or Instagram account, and we could discuss nice. it there. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.